Hey, this is Jonas and today I want to try making a game with Godot, a game engine I've never used before. I can already see here the download is not taking all that long. The game engines I've used so far for my game projects are Game Maker Studio 2, which I'm currently using to make Will You Snail, and I've also used Unity quite excessively. For example, we made Islanders with Unity. That is very surprising, it seems like I don't even have to install the program, it just launches. And now it asks me if I want to have a look at an example project, as that is what it's suggesting. Let's have a look. What would I do if I learn a new engine, you can watch me do that right now. Really, step one for me is just opening the program up and seeing what I can figure out by myself. The controls don't feel super nice, which is a little bit of a shame for a sample project. I really like um, the fact that we get the dark color scheme right from the get-go. It's pr pretty pleasant to look at in terms of colors. Is there any advantage to knowing multiple game engines? I would say if you're just getting started, honestly no, just focus on one, try to master one. That's probably a lot more beneficial for you. Here we seem to have all of the objects in the scene. Uh, this actually seems to be quite similar to Unity, where when I click on an object I can see the properties of the object over here. I'm just exploring so far. Oh, we can even switch to 3D view. Let's actually uh, create a new project. If you're a little more experienced, I can see some advantages in knowing multiple game engines, simply because Every engine has different advantages, disadvantages, and then depending on the game you want to make, you can just pick the best engine. Create root node. Let's create a 2D scene. Interesting. Ah! I'm starting to feel a little bit lost here, so what I'll do next is I'll just watch a tutorial or two to hopefully get the basics of how this engine works. Okay, seems like I found a cool tutorial by Heartbeast. Greetings to you, Heartbeast, by the way. Thanks for making good tutorials. I'll link Heartbeast's channel here in the corner. If I remember to do that, check out his videos. And also one little tip I have for you when watching tutorials is at least watch them on 1.5, the original speed, if not even on double the speed. And now I'll just let him teach me the ways. My name is Benjamin. And welcome to another game making tutorial. Watchy watchy. I'm going to pronounce it Godot because their logo is a robot and they rhyme, and also because I've seen the developers and they pronounce it Godot. Oh, the developers pronounce it Godot. Woo, I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> I've seen some people pronounce it Godot. 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 With a silent T in the end. I'll just go for the easiest approach, which is a bunch of colored squares. Let's go to color mind. Bloop. I think this is the fastest way to bring those colors into Photoshop. Okay, how do I import something into the project again? We want to select the paddle node, and we want to do create new node. That way, this new node will be a child of and do load textures or sprites. I'll do it textures here, and I'm gonna create a new folder. New folder and name it. Okay. Do we have them in engine now? Oh yeah, I have them in here now. Then I'll just bring the collider to the same size as well. I haven't tried Godot yet, but from what I've heard so far, the advantages are that it's very easy to learn, very lightweight, a very small download. It is free and it is open source. It supports both 2D games as well as 3D games. Nice, first step complete. I can run the game and there is a block that I put in there, woo! Okay, now I added a rigid body to the scene and this is actually so similar to Unity. There's actually a com component called rigid body 2D and then as children I have a collision shape in there and a sprite and that's it. Now if I hit play, we can actually see this fall down. I'm starting to figure out the basics, which is great. That's exactly what tutorials are very, very useful for in my opinion. See, this here is how a game maker looks like. There's an entirely different different structure with a bunch of floating windows here and then rooms are com completely separate with with these layers here like it's it's very very different from both unity and godot Will it blend? Oh yeah, it does! Okay, now it seems like you can create a new script here. I thought about using C Sharp, but it's hard to follow the tutorials if you're using a different programming language. So I thought, okay, let's check out GD script. Maybe it's not, not all that hard to learn. And apparently this language is similar to Python, which means you don't need to use brackets. You just tap everything in. Interesting. All right, this looks promising. Next up, I want to see how I can get some player inputs. Okay, Godot seems to have a pretty nice input manager, actually. This looks very clean, a lot cleaner than in Unity at the moment. Heartbeast in the tutorial made a breakout game. I'm starting to divert from that a little bit because I'm starting to get the hang of this, which means I can start experimenting myself. I can start being creative a little bit. I feel like diverting from tutorials is a really good way to see if you understood what you've learned so far. Look up a couple of things on the internet. I wanted to see how I can get button inputs. I just looked it up in the manual. Using autocomplete is often a really good way to find out which functions there are. Just typing in 
what's like force at force whatever at central force i wonder what that means it's a constant directional force without affecting rotations the correct way seems to be apply central impulse that's just the kind of things you have to figure out when starting with a new engine what the correct way to do things is because there are oftentimes there are multiple ways to do something and some ways work better than others see now i have a nice smooth damping at the end here when I release the button. I want to find out how collision detection and all of that stuff works. I think I'll get some more answers for that in the tutorial. So I'll just continue watching the tutorial for now. I want to add that control. But very first, let's add in the bricks. Okay, mm -hmm. let's add in the bricks. Let's go to our world. From Heartbeast tutorials, I learned how to do collision detection. I really like the way this works, actually. Um, you can just get a list with all of the objects you're colliding with, and then you can loop through all of these objects, see with which one of them are bricks, and then we delete them. Bow. Bow. I agree that this feels quite beginner-friendly. Look, you can even organize your objects in here just like in Unity. Okay, now I just looked up how I can make these variables accessible from within the editor. Simply done by writing export float. Ah, nice, here are my variables, see? Very simple solution if you don't know something. Ask Google. Here's something I don't really get and that is how you link objects to one another that is something that's quite simple in unity here it feels a little strange okay i did a bit more research and it really seems like referencing objects from one another is a little more tricky and annoying than in unity you basically just get the the path and then from the path you can can get the node and then you can get the position so this way now the pedal can copy the position of the ball and take the own y position for the own position um, the pedal follows the ball movement now i had a fun little idea for the game and that was just what if the pedal moves away from you and tries to make you fall down let's check out how this actually plays i mean gameplay wise the biggest issue here is obviously that we don't have to touch the ground we can just press up and then we don't even need to hit that pedal. So for example, we could try what happens if we can just move to the left and to the right. Now look at what I've made. I haven't seen anything like this before. Uh, the pedal at the bottom gets faster and faster now. You have to break all of the blocks at the top. You control the ball and the pedal at the bottom will just moving faster and faster and it will try to dodge you. So instead of the ball getting faster and faster in this game, the pedal gets faster and faster. You can't lose yet, you can't win, but eh. Basic gameplay is down. Here, here is my resume. Do I recommend Godot Game Engine now? Drum roll. Ooh. Yes, I actually really liked Godot Game Engine. I was pleasantly surprised by Godot Game Engine. Firstly, by how small it was. It has a better input manager than Unity. The way scenes work is pretty clever because as far as I've understood, scenes and prefabs are basically the same thing in Godot. There's a built-in localization system. It's easy to use. I think switching from Unity to Godot shouldn't be a problem at all. This feels very familiar if you have used Unity for a while. So it's basically Unity but in free, open source and it loads extremely quickly. And then you're waiting and then it's not opening and then you're waiting and then it's not opening and then you're waiting and then it's not opening. <coughs> Um, I didn't even have to install it. You could probably put Godot on your flash drive, plug it in somewhere and start working on your project. That is extremely cool. I think that is a very big advantage. It has upsides, it has downsides. Linking to other objects, referencing other objects is a little more annoying. As far as I've understood, the programming language in Godot is also not compiled which means in terms of performance, it might be a little slower. It definitely seems like it's a little more optimized for 2D. You have really nice grid snapping here, for example. Everything just snaps to the grid super nicely, which is a feature I'm definitely missing in Unity. Like this is so useful if you wanna make 2D games, 2D layouts like this, grid snapping like that. Doing that without without grid snapping is just annoying. Overall, very solid. Everybody has always been talking about this Godot engine. Now I can finally join the conversation after trying it out a little bit. That is very nice. Hope you enjoyed this little let's try Godot engine. Hope you found it entertaining. And see you in the next one. Bye bye.